starts right now. All right, starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. 63 now, but it was an exciting time for weather overnight. Even parts of our area seeing flooding. We're going to see what Sarah Spivey has to say, not only about what happened overnight and what you can expect for the rest of your Sunday. But for now, good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Sunday. It is December 11th. Thank you good so much morning. for starting your morning with us. Were you woken up by any yes. thunder lighting? Yes, okay. and it was loud, intense thunder. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. But then... Sarah, I, I didn't check my rain gauge because it was still dark outside, but my side of town, I live on the northeast side, uh, north just northeast of downtown, got a pretty good amount of rain. A decent amount of rain for some folks around San Antonio, but a lot missed out completely on the rain. So while some missed out completely on the rain, others got too much of a good thing. Here's a look at the radar right now. You can see that showers and storms are well southeast of San Antonio in parts of DeWitt and uh, Lavaca County right now. We've got an electrified storm that just moved through Cuero, pushing into Victoria County at the moment and through southern Lavaca County. But here in San Antonio, even though the rain has stopped, there's still an area of eastern Bear County, southern Guadalupe County, and the extreme northwestern section of Wilson County that is still under a flash flood warning until 7 o'clock this morning, so for the next hour. And that's because flash flooding is still ongoing in those parts of the county because of over seven inches of rain that fell very localized in that area in eastern Bear County. Coming up, we're going to show you those rainfall estimates and just how close some of us were to missing out on that rain. As of right now, though, it is 64 degrees, mostly cloudy to cloudy skies. We've got winds from the northeast at about 10 miles per hour. Humidity is low. Dew points are less than 50 degrees. Good morning in Bulverde at 61, 68 in Castroville, 62 in Converse, where a lot of rain fell, 62 in Seguin, 65 at Stinson, and 61 in Kerrville. And for your Sunday, we're going to have fairly cloudy skies, only a few peaks of sunshine here and there. It'll be 66 at noon and 69 for the high temperature. Northeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. So cooler today than it has been over the last few days, and we've got one more very muggy day tomorrow before a cold front shakes things up this week. I'll have those details and, of course, a look at those rainfall totals coming up in a bit. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, the search is on for the shooting suspect who sent one person to the hospital overnight. So take a look. This was the scene just after midnight on Colima Street. That's near South Zars Moor, the west side of town. Police say a man and woman were walking home from the store. A driver of a silver SUV pulled up next to them and started shooting. The man shot in the leg, taken to University Hospital. He is expected to be okay, but right now, police still searching for who's responsible. Lots of questions remain after an explosion killed two people in southeast Bear County. It's a story we first brought to you here yesterday on GMSA. The explosion happened near K-Bar. That's a construction company on South Presa Street near Highway 181. People in the area say they heard the boom. Rachel Reyes lives a mile away from the explosion and says it sounded much closer. It hit the garage door like really hard and you can even like feel like a vibration like that. San Antonio Fire says a huge scene like this will take some time to figure out exactly what happened and the cause of that explosion. As for now, the Bear County Medical Office is still working to identify those two victims. Now to the rise in flu and COVID cases across the country. Officials in New York City and Los Angeles County once again urging people to wear masks indoors. In fact, now in parts of California, face coverings are even required in some certain settings. This comes as the number of people hospitalized with the flu remains at its highest level in more than a decade. Absolutely understand people's reluctance about masks, particularly in children. But if you actually want to keep kids in school and you want to make sure the schools are staffed, it turns out that masks are actually, especially during a surge like this, one of the best ways we can keep kids healthy. All that illness stretching hospital resources. 80% of hospital beds in the U.S. are occupied. And a reminder about vaccines, the flu and shot COVID boosters take two weeks to become fully effective. And now to that urgent operation to contain an oil spill in Kansas, forcing an emergency shutdown of the Keystone Pipeline. 14,000 barrels spilling into a creek in Washington County, Kansas. It's the largest leak in the pipeline's history. The spill is now raising concerns about the environment and a possible increase in gas prices. 
certainly could see an exponential increase on the effect of gas prices if the pipeline remains down for more than a week. That's really going to be pushing it. Refineries will likely be running out of uh, oil to refine at that stage. Environmentalists are closely monitoring the situation. Emergency crews are working through the weekend to clean up. Back here at home, we know there has been so much excitement in and around San Antonio. The Alamo Dome, home to so many fun, electric, and captivating events. And with the new year just around the corner, so much more is on the way. That's why this morning, Richard Oliver with the Alamo Dome is joining us on Leading SA Live to talk about what the Dome has meant to the Alamo City, a preview of 2023, and the impact of UTSA's amazing success, and of course, the XFL. Make sure to stay here 8 a.m. for the full conversation. Time now, just about 6.06, 63 degrees out. All right, so here in San Antonio, we know some people saw some flooding, but there have been winter storms hitting cities across the country. We have the latest. Taking a live look, 63 degrees at 6.06. We had some rain overnight, some rumbles overnight. Sarah will go over those areas that were impacted and what today is going to look like when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. So happening now, a powerful winter storm making its way across the country, bringing several feet of snow in some areas and heavy rain to others. That's right. The first system dropping heavy snow in parts of the west. Along the west coast, the wind whipping up the surf in Santa Cruz and heavy rain in Sacramento. In the Midwest, a different system bringing more than nine inches of snow to South Dakota. Plow drivers working hard to clear the roads. Or a lot of the times they've been working for uh, 12, 12, sometimes 16 hour shifts. And so that same system impacting the Northeast and in Eastern Texas, along with much of Louisiana, Arkansas and Mississippi could be hit with strong winds, hail, maybe even tornadoes. So Sarah Spivey, you've been tracking a lot over the last 24 hours. We have, we have. And you know, a cool front moved through overnight and the biggest impact to folks were if you woke up from some thunder and lightning perhaps in for parts of eastern Bear County, some flooding in areas, very localized. Here's where that system is now. It's pushing south into Victoria County and you can see it just moved through Cuero. There could even be some very small hail with this as well. It's fairly electrified too. Uh, again, moving to the east pretty quickly and out of south central Texas, southern Lavaca County dealing with some rain as well right now. But take a look out back here towards San Antonio. You can see in this green box here, this is a flash flood warning, which by the way is still in effect until 7 o'clock for Eastern Bear County, Southern Guadalupe County, and a small sliver there of Wilson County. Now, even though the rain has stopped, one thing I want to show you is that take a look at these rainfall totals just within the last 12 hours or so, really honestly in the last six hours, you'll see a bullseye right here in this flash flood area. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the warning, but anywhere you see these purple colors, this is where up to six to eight inches of rain fell from St. Hedwig to Adkins to New Berlin, right on that Guadalupe County line. Very impressive rainfall totals here. In fact, I'm going to zoom out a little bit more and what you'll see is that even to the north, let's take a look at uh, just south of JBSA Randolph in the Converse area. All right, less than an inch of rain up near shirts, only a hundredth of an inch of rain. Look at this difference, just a few miles here. We're talking about less than 10 miles of a difference from flooding training rainfall to nothing. And a lot of San Antonio got nothing overnight. Seguin got some healthy rain, Lavernia got some healthy rain. Look at this though, anywhere in North Bear County, Northwestern Bear County, no rainfall, just some noisy thunder and lightning in the overnight hours. However, on the southeast side of town, other than the flooding rains through St. Hedwig up to New Berlin, there were some areas along that uh, southern edge of 410 that got up to about three inches of rainfall. So again, healthy rain for some, too much rain for some, but for the majority of us, 
no rain whatsoever. Here's a look at where that system is now pushing through the Houston area. That's that cold front that moved through. And as we look at temperatures behind this front, it's not all that much cooler. The front has already been through Austin for quite some time, and it's still 60 degrees in Austin. So today is going to be a cooler day than the last few days, but not necessarily cool. It's 64 degrees outside right now. Winds are from the northeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, and there are some areas that are dealing with some fog early this morning, like out near Del Rio and Carrizo Springs. Otherwise, a cool morning out there for us. 63 in New Braunfels, 65 in Hondo, 61 in Kerrville, 64 in Uvalde. In your KSAT 12 hour forecast, perhaps a sprinkle or two over the next couple of hours, but it's going to stay fairly cloudy through noon when we'll be in the mid 60s. And in the afternoon, highs will be in the upper 60s, close to 70 degrees. Yesterday, we were close to 80 degrees. So about a 10 degree drop. Still, though, that is warmer than seasonally average. Our high temperature this time of year is usually right around 66. It'll be 68 in New Braunfels, 66 in Kerrville, 73 in Hondo, 73 in Uvalde, 75 in Catula, and 73 in Del Rio. Now, Outside right now, dew points are a little bit lower than the last few days. Pretty pleasant in the 50s, but watch what happens tomorrow. We see our dew points go right back up into the mid to upper 60s. Temperatures and the dew point are going to be close all day tomorrow. So tomorrow is actually going to be a drizzly, damp day. Keep that in mind as you're planning your Monday. There are going to be areas of dampness for your morning and potentially your evening commute. High temperature will be right near 72 tomorrow, but it'll be very humid all day long. Then, before it can be too humid for too long, a cold front arrives Tuesday, and that's going to drop our temperatures into the 40s in the morning, afternoons into the 60s, but I think the biggest impact for people too is the lower humidity. Finally, after about a week and a half of high humidity, we're going to be seeing lower humidity. I'll be talking more about that next cold front coming up in the next half hour. I'm also excited about Wednesday, Thursday, Friday because you didn't have a lot of clouds on that graphic. Sunshine mm. too, sunshine. Low humidity, sunshine, lower 60s. temps. 60s. Yeah, that's okay, Can we agree on 60s? We're good with 60s? 60s? Yeah. Great. Okay, yeah, they're perfect. great. <laughs> she said with snark. <laughs> Time now, 615, 63 degrees out. Goes first go. Oh my good. What a win, what a win, what a way to celebrate. Got a lot of help from the bench too. We're going to have a full highlight of what happened last night and what comes next. Taking a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, five, seven, two, fireball eight, daily four, eight, seven, five, nine, fireball three. Cash five, two, 13, 29, 30, 35, lotto Texas. 18, 21, 29, 31, 47, 48, and here we go. Did you play? I didn't play Powerball. It's not as high as Mega Millions though right now. Well, wasn't Mega Millions at 400 million? Yeah, and I don't know if this has even broken 100 yet. Oh, so it's not even worth your time. <laughs> For those of you who did play, because, you know, we would love even a million. Here's the Powerball numbers. 9, 23, 47, 49, 68, Powerball 19, Power Play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs go. Coach Pop's 29th coaching anniversary ends with a W, and for fans, a lot of adrenaline. So a back and forth matchup, but the man, the myth, the legend, Keldon Johnson. Coming up big, there he is, number three with 21 points, and then a name not many Spurs fans have learned recently, Romeo Langford, adding 19 and San Antonio Spurs, celebrating the 26th anniversary of Coach Pop's first game by beating the Miami Heat. Obviously, there's a lot of history between these two franchises, especially with Ray Allen. But big shouts to my guy Devin Vassell, 19 points for the Spurs, and his most critical shot, hitting a jumper with only 113 left in the game that put the silver and black ahead, and they stayed ahead. Really a full team win. Zach Collins adding 16 points, and Doug McDermott another 13 points. Just the way Pop loves it, six Spurs in double digits. The Spurs holding on to win their second game in a row, the final score 115 to 111. The whole team did a good job. They're, they're behind the curve, you know, coming out every night with all the injuries, and they haven't missed a beat. They've uh, competed uh, really well, and uh, we made some timely shots tonight, you know, down the stretch. So for us, it's a, it's a great win against a really well-coached, experienced team. So uh, we're thrilled. 
All right, so the Spurs coming back home, getting ready to host the Cleveland Cavaliers tomorrow night, 7.30 at home, AT&T Center. And my favorite part of the, the game, obviously, it was competitive. Big celebration for Pop. Yeah, what a was, great present. It was a day game. That's what I loved. We had the Army-Navy game. We had Spurs. Max, you're showing your age. Uh, well, <laughs> when you go to sleep at like 6.30, the I day know. games. I, I'm, I'm there with you. NBA, if you're listening, we need more day games on Saturdays. Bring more ga day games. Okay. Time now, 621, 63 degrees out. Don't forget KSAT is helping raise money for the Parade of Kettles by the Salvation Army. It's a competition between other businesses, and we want, of course, to be number one here at KSAT. So no matter how big or small every donation helps, you can donate by scanning this QR code on your screen by heading to KSAT.com. Good morning and welcome back. By the end of this year, 300 kids will have a new comfy place to lay their head at night. But first, there's a lot of prep work that goes into it. Volunteers with Sleep in Heavenly Peace build bed frames. Bless you, sir. You. They're putting together the beds for kids in need across our community. Some jobs as easy as gathering supplies. Others involve power tools, saws, and sanders. Each bed costs about $250, and that includes the bed frames, the mattress, and the bedding. They have one more day of building scheduled for next Saturday. And delivery day is Christmas Eve. Check out this fun video. This is the annual Santa Con bar crawl in New York City. People dress up as Santas, Mrs. Clauses, elves, and other holiday favorites. They started in Midtown and made their way down to the East Village. Max, what would you dress as? Uh, so here's the thing, uh -huh. and this is great visuals. Um, you couldn't pay me enough to partake in this. <laughs> so I have a lot of friends who live in New York City, and they tell me the horror stories of Look, I don't want to take anything away from... You get into the subway, and then it's like... <laughs> well, there's a reason why there's so many police out there. It's because it's just hordes of drunk, young individuals okay. who just take over the streets of New York. You can't get anywhere. You can't get anywhere. <laughs> At some point, the drinking gets a little bit too much for these individuals. And so, it's great visuals. I'm good with never partaking. Maybe, like, you go for a little bit, watch the yeah. visuals, go home. Exactly. Uh, I'll watch. Yeah. Yeah. Your age is showing again. A hundred percent. I go to sleep early and I don't drink all day. Time now, 626, 63 degrees out. What a life. All right, taking a look outside with Trans Guide. It's still really early out there. If you're going to be waking up in a bit to go to mass or service or just get some breakfast tacos, we'll let you know if any incidents pop up on Trans Guide on our end. 63 degrees at 629. Lots of weather overnight. You may have woken up to some thunderstorms or some thunder in your area, but not everyone got rain. Sarah Spivey will explain in just a bit. Good morning. 630 this morning. It is Sunday. It is December 11th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So you have two dogs. All right. Yeah. When the thunder and lightning happens, not what happy. happens? No. Not happy. Scooby was under the covers, Aww. like right next to me. He woke up, looked at me, and then like started the the thunder the thunder shake. And I was like, it's okay, bud. Or Come th here. Thunder buddies. Yeah, thunder buddies. All right. So Sarah Spivey, like Sarah Cosa was saying, not everyone saw the weather. That's right. Not everyone saw rain, and some people saw way too much rain. But hey, we got some pictures into KSAC Connect on our weather app. This is uh, from someone in Converse saying a massive lightning bolt with twin chasers. No, this is not a black and white picture. You can actually see the colored lights on a, a home here. So a big bright flash of lightning. Those storms last night were electrified. We even saw some quarter sized hail in New Berlin. Speaking of New Berlin, that is the area that got way too much rain. The flash flood warning has been canceled for Eastern Bear County as much of the rain has drained off now and we're not seeing any more remaining flash flooding, but still over seven inches of rain in parts of Eastern Bear County. As you can see though, right now, all of the rain is to the south and to the east of San Antonio, approaching Edna along the coast and in southern, uh, southern Lavaca County, pushing out of DeWitt County as well. But it was this area of Eastern Bear County that is still actually under a flash flood warning 
morning. So they are under a flash flood warning until 7 o'clock. The next 30 minutes or so, the warning wasn't turned on, and that's why it didn't show up a little bit earlier. But still, again, these areas in eastern Bear County saw 7-plus inches of rainfall into southern Guadalupe County near Seguin as well. So coming up, we're going to take a closer look at those rainfall totals and show you the bullseye of rain that happened overnight. So what else are we going to talk about? Well, today behind that rain for some, it's going to be cooler near 70 degrees, but still fairly cloudy tomorrow. Humid again with drizzle and pretty much a damp day in general for your Monday. Then later this week, though, a cold front will arrive and that's when we say bye bye to the humidity and hello to the sunshine. I've got a look ahead to all these headlines in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a mother found her daughter shot outside of their home on the city's west side. It happened on Texas Avenue near Woodlawn Lake. San Antonio police say the woman went outside, found her daughter in a car shot in her back. We're told that vehicle had been stolen. Four other teens are now in custody for questioning by police. The girl who was shot is expected to be OK. Also overnight, San Antonio Fire Department had to put out a small fire inside a home, but Here's what happened. A driver crashed into that house. According to police on the scene, this was the scene around 2 a.m. A driver speeding on uh, south on Babcock Road, losing control, crashing right into this home. That's when a small fire started. Luckily, no injuries reported. Everyone inside the home made it out safely. We're told alcohol may have played a factor in the crash. Still waiting to learn the suspect's identity and what charges they're going to be facing. Well, her child was taken from her, but that didn't stop Kimberly Rubio from fighting for change in her honor. That didn't stop her from finishing school with a 3.8 GPA. This comes six months since her daughter, Lexi, her life was taken from her at Robb Elementary. Alyssa, Alyssa Cole spoke with the now St. Mary's University graduate as she walked across a stage into a new chapter of her life. Kimberly Nicole Rubio is just moments away from receiving a Bachelor of Arts degree in history at St. Mary's University. She's filled with emotion. I'm proud of myself and I feel like Lexi would be proud of me. Thinking of her 10 year old daughter, Lexi Rubio, whose life was taken in the mass shooting at Robb Elementary. I think she would have asked to look around the campus because Lexi wanted to attend St. Mary's. Kimberly, just a semester away from graduating when the tragedy happened back in May, is using her strength and Lexi's memory as a source of power, not only to walk across the stage, but to advocate for an assault weapons ban. Magna cum laude, Kimberly Rubio, history. I don't think that the average citizen should have access to a weapon that ruins people's lives. As she navigates a new chapter of life, she acknowledges the pain it comes with her husband by her side every step of the way. I am very proud of you, of course. I know Lexi's looking down on you and she's happy. She's here. And I love you. Love you too. She's determined to keep moving forward, honoring the memory of her daughter and all 21 victims of Robb Elementary. Our plans originally were to wait for me to graduate and then to leave Uvalde. Um, I wasn't fast enough. Um, now that we buried our daughter there, we'll stay with her. So we're readjusting and trying to figure out what's next. A week after the tragedy in Uvalde, St. Mary's University created the Lexi Rubio Memorial Law Scholarship Fund. Kimberly says Lexi wanted to be a lawyer and it was the perfect way for the university to honor her memory. Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Stopping your morning headlines, Russia's blistering attacks in eastern Ukraine. So take a look. New video showing devastation in a Ukrainian city. Now, President Zelensky accusing Russia of burning the city to ruins. The people who live there, mostly elderly, now they're trying to get as many out as possible and as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, Russia reportedly looking to Iran to replenish their missile stockpile, another sign of the deepening cooperation between the two countries. So far, the United States has given Ukraine more than $20 billion since the invasion. The wife of WNBA star Brittany Griner is speaking out for the first time since the reunion. She is thanking everyone for their support. Griner is recovering here in San Antonio after her release from a Russian penile co colony and 10 months in detention. Her supporters are relieved she is back home. 
get letters and you can see photos, but to hear her voice is something we hadn't really done in a long time. And then to see her smile, I mean, that's, that's BG. Meanwhile, former Marine Paul Whelan is still in Russian detention. He was imprisoned for four years on espionage charges that U.S. officials say are a sham. Now the White House is under renewed pressure to bring him home as well. Well, Tokyo Company aiming for the moon with its own private mechanism, and it is blasting off atop a SpaceX rocket. It seems like a lot of collaboration between numerous organizations, even NASA, and they're not alone. Flying with the United Arab Emirates' first lunar rover and a toy-like robot from Japan. It's designed to roll around on the moon in the gray dust. It's going to take nearly five months for the lander and its experiments to reach the moon. Now, the company iSpace designed its craft to use minimal fuel, save money, and leave more room for cargo. So, basically, it's taking a low-energy, slow path to the moon. It is flying one million miles away from the Earth before looping back and intersecting with the moon by the end of April. Don't worry, though. Like we've been saying, NASA is jumping into the project as well. They're hitching a ride on the rocket, and it's a, actually a small NASA laser experiment. It's bound for the moon on its own to hunt for ice in a permanently shadowed crater of the lunar south pole. So, a lot of countries in here. I thought this was awesome. This probably was a little this, longer than this usual. This is very cool. It's very cool, and it's gonna take, you know, a long time, but looking for ice, that means that there could be water. Uh, when you said it's planned to roll around in the gray dust, I literally pictured a dog on its back, like, rolling in the mud, but in this case, I guess, moon dust. Or a robot. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. All right, time now, 638, 63 degrees out. After the break, a winter blast pounding much of the U.S. will show you where that storm is heading next. And speaking of storms, taking a live look out at the Alamo City, some of you guys watching probably saw some storms, heard some storms overnight. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey with your local forecast in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. Powerful winter storms surging across the country. Today, people living on the East Coast are expected to experience their first snowfall of the season, while out West, a powerful winter storm brought heavy snow, gusty winds and rain. ABC's Chuck Silverson has the story. Back-to-back -back winter storms are impacting much of the country. The first system dropping heavy snow in parts of the west. Up to five feet of snow is expected in the Sierra Nevada. Fierce winds so strong in South Lake Tahoe, this ski lift at Heavily Resort was shut down. Along the west coast, the wind whipping up the surf in Santa Cruz. Heavy rain in Sacramento. ABC's Zoreen Shaw was there. Those power lines right there backing down onto this car. There was a huge power line going across the top of my car. It's probably totally in the Midwest, a different system bringing more than nine inches of snow to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Plow drivers working hard to clear the roads. These guys have been working, or a lot of the times have been working for uh, 12, 12, sometimes 16 hour shifts. That same system impacting the Northeast. Snows will explode across the western New York and eventually into New England. Not a whole lot, but three to six inches of snow, mostly away from the cities, mostly away from I-95. A high impact event for much of the country and a dangerous day in the south on Tuesday. Eastern Texas, along with much of Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi could be hit with strong winds, large hail, and possible tornadoes. Chuck Severson, ABC News, New York. All right, so they're seeing snow, Sarah. A lot yeah. of people here not seeing snow, but a lot of people did see rain and thunder and, and lightning. It was an interesting night last night because while most of us heard some thunder, saw some lightning, the vast majority of us missed out on the rain completely. However, those that did get rain got way too much of the rainfall. Outside right now in San Antonio, it's 64 degrees. We have winds from the northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. No more rain for us in the forecast today. In fact, it'll be a mainly cloudy day with temperatures in the 60s and near 70 degrees for the high temperature. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast will be in the mid 60s around 10 uh, mid to upper 60s around noon and in the afternoon peaks of sunshine with a high temperature right near 70 degrees 69 for the high temperature northeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Let's take a look at the radar though right now because there are some areas of the KSAT viewing area that are getting rain mainly our extreme east 
eastern and southern counties. Lavaca County, southern Lavaca County seeing some rainfall near Edna. There's plenty of lightning there, even perhaps some small hail as well in northern Victoria County seeing some showers and storms. But really now all this rain is moving through the Houston area. You'll notice that around San Antonio there is still a flash flood warning in effect for the next 15 minutes or so uh, until 7 o'clock. And Part of me, it's actually been extended until 8 o'clock this morning. And the reason for that is this area across parts of uh East Bear County and Southern Guadalupe County saw somewhere along the lines of anywhere from six to even up to eight inches of rainfall. What we're going to do right now is we're going to take a look at the rainfall estimates from the radar. And as you can see, anywhere in this bullseye, that's where we've seen about six to seven inches of rain. That goes from Adkins to St. Hedwig to New Berlin into Southern uh, Guadalupe County. Now areas near Seguin, you saw some good healthy rain without much of the flooding risk. All right, about two to four inches of rainfall. There was still some minor flooding on streets and the like, but it's really this Adkins to St. Hedwig to New Berlin area that got up to seven to potentially eight inches of rainfall as well. A lot of rain in those areas, but as you look to the north, you can see the sharp fall off of the rainfall near shirts. No rain recorded there really in the shirts area and that's only a difference of about 10 miles. Notice that downtown San Antonio did see some rain, but not a ton, really only about a tenth of an inch of rainfall. And unfortunately, northern sections of uh, of Bear County and northwestern sections too saw absolutely no rainfall whatsoever. Floresville, some decent rain, but not a lot of that. It's really that bullseye area where we're still seeing some runoff flooding uh, of, of creeks and even some street closures as well in eastern Bear County. And so that's why the flash flood warning has been extended to 8 o'clock this morning. As we take a look at the weather setup, all because of this cold front that has moved through, this has been a weak front. You know, the temperature is not all that much cooler than what it has been, but our next front is expected to arrive Tuesday and this one is going to be potent, not necessarily an Arctic blast of air, but it is going to knock our temperatures down and take away the humidity. You can see how much snowfall is falling around this system and it's going to be taking all of this colder air and sinking it southward into San Antonio. So let me take you through the future cast. I mentioned today is going to be cloudy and near 70 degrees. But early tomorrow morning, humidity returns. We're going to have a pretty damp day tomorrow. In the morning, it'll be near 61 with drizzle and fog, a damp commute. And even during the day, drizzle won't be as widespread, but will be patchy even during the day. High temperature right near 72. Then Tuesday is cold front day. We start the day with uh, drizzle and fog and uh, muggy conditions, but that front will move through around midday. It'll sweep away the humidity and we will see the sun. All right, temperatures will be in the 70s, 60s behind that front. Really nice on Tuesday itself. And then we'll settle into a more chilly weather pattern with cold mornings and cool afternoons for the remainder of the week. But the big thing is too, that humidity will go away and it'll be a really nice welcome change to the forecast for us after about a week and a half of pretty icky sticky weather and again Eastern Bear County, you are still under that flash flood warning until 8 a.m. If you come across flooded roadways, remember, turn around, don't drown. Behind that second cold front, we'll be seeing mornings in the 40s, afternoons in the 50s and 60s. And more sunshine. And more sunshine, absolutely. Thank you, Sarah. Sorry, thank you so much. 648, 63 degrees out. Let's take a look, <clears throat> excuse me, outside with TransGuide. Not really seeing any issues or flashing lights out there at 410 in McCullough and 410 in Perrin Vital. If anything pops up, we'll let you know about it. All right, let's take a look at those ladder numbers. Pick three, five, seven, two, fireball eight. Daily four, eight, seven, five, nine, fireball three. Cash five, two, 13, 29, 30, 35. Texas Lotto, 18, 21, 29, 31, 47, 48. Let's look at those Powerball numbers. Not quite at 100 million. I think it was at 80 89? something. Okay. All right, 9, 23, 47, 49, 68. Powerball 19, Power Play 2.
Now to an outpouring of love this holiday season. A huge celebration outside Philadelphia for a little boy who's battling cancer. Here's ABC's Whit Johnson with the story. A super surprise in one New Jersey community. A passionate gift of holiday cheer for four-year-old Aaron Klein, the guest of honor who's bravely battling brain cancer. Christmas carolers. The Philadelphia Phillies. Friends and family all stepping up to lift his spirits. Surprising him with a Christmas parade. His house transformed into a winter wonderland. When we had heard the news of what had happened with Aaron, it was all we could do was to help them out. Many here inspired by little Aaron's strength. Just like to tell him, I believe in you, you could do this. Her sign reading, Go Mighty Aaron. Aaron dancing with the Phillies mascot, the Philly fanatic, and smiling with his family as the parade rolled by. Just seeing his interaction kind of brings tears to my eyes a little bit just because it just just helps, um, you know, uplift his spirit. You can see the joy in his face. Aaron's been battling brain cancer for several months and will be spending Christmas and much of the holiday season in the hospital. But Aaron's family tonight grateful for one more special holiday gift. Aaron's last MRI scan showing he's now ready to undergo an important stem cell transplant giving them new hope. Creating as many like happy memories as we can before we go into the hospital again. Just seeing like all the community support, like I don't know if there's words that can describe like how much it has meant. That was ABC's Whit Johnson reporting. We want to know what you think about the elf on the shelf tradition. Oh. I have a lot of thoughts on this. I appreciate how <laughs> elf on the shelf is capitalized here. <laughs> okay, so the elves are said to be magical oh. as they scout on kids behavior for Santa and report back to the North Pole each night. I've, I've heard that this is very true. Mm -hmm. uh, Justin Horn has told me all about it. Okay. So returning each morning to a new spot. It was originally a hide and seek game, but has morphed into something much more elaborate. elaborate. Turns out many parents either love it or, or hate it. So let us know what you think and share your elf on the shelf pictures with us. I've been talking to a lot of the parents here. Mm -hmm. Azian Bermia, one of our f uh, photojournalists, mm -hmm. he has strong opinions on it. Does but, he love or hate it? Um, he's not a fan. Okay. And then Justin Horn also said, you know, it's a, not a fan. Not a fan, but elf on the shelf is a thing. It is a thing. And, and for they any do, kid and watching, they do report back to Santa. It's true. So be good. Time now, just about 6.55, 63 degrees out. Here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good Sunday morning. Coming up here on GMA, that major storm slamming the West Coast. Snow, high winds and heavy rains and the avalanche warnings. What you can expect as the massive system makes its way east. Our weather team is tracking it all. We're also following that major pipeline spill in Kansas. Now the largest in nearly a decade, dumping enough oil to fill an Olympic-sized pool. The ongoing environmental concerns, plus what it could mean for the prices you pay at the pump, will break it all down. And we have a very special guest, USC quarterback Caleb Williams, this year's Heisman Trophy winner, joins us live this morning. What it means for him to join this exclusive club of college football's most elite players, and what's next for the college sophomore. Yes, college sophomore. That's all ahead here on GMA. Welcome back. we got a lot more coming up on GMSA at 8 a.m. The Alamo Dome, obviously home to so many fun, electric, and captivating events, but with 2023 just around the corner, there is so much more on the way. So at 8 a.m., Richard Oliver with the Alamo Dome joining us on Leading SA, talking about what the Dome means to the Alamo City, a preview of 2023, and of course, the impact of UTSA and the XFL. Not going to want to miss it. 8 a.m. Rain has moved southeast of San Antonio, seeing a thunderstorm pushing closer to Etna uh, and also across northern Victoria County. But there is still a flash flood warning in effect through 8 a.m. for areas of eastern Bear County and southern Guadalupe County. These are areas that have seen up to seven plus inches of rain in the overnight hours. But just a few miles to the north, less than a tenth of an inch of rain, unfortunately. So very localized flooding occurred overnight today. The high temperature will be near 70 degrees with a few peaks of sunshine and northeast winds at 5 to 15. Then tomorrow, a drizzly and damp day. High temperature only in the 70s, humid, but the humidity gets knocked down on Tuesday with the arrival of a more potent front, making it feel more like December toward the end of the week. Yay!
Can't wait. Yay. Can't Sunshine. wait. So, that's Bobby, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We're going to take an hour long break. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you guys at 8. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A local mother finding her daughter shot in the back. We have the latest on the investigation from police on the scene. Police also investigating an overnight crash after it caused a small fire inside a home. We have the latest. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, a lot more calm and quiet than some people saw and heard overnight. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. It is December 11th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. Some people started the morning a lot earlier. They're woken up by thunder and lightning. It's some very loud thunder. Uh, I live on the city's northeast side, and it was nice, Sarah, to see. Is that the sun that we saw out there? How, where has it been? Yeah, <laughs> there are peaks of sunshine behind that front that moved through, but you're exactly right. There were parts of Bear County that saw no rain, and then there were parts of Bear County that saw way too much rain. Right now, that rainfall is continuing to push south and east toward the Houston area, but moving through Edna right now, closer to the coast. Here in San Antonio, there still is a flash flood warning in effect until 9 o'clock this morning for Eastern Bear County and parts of Southern Guadalupe County as well as the uh, northernmost tip there of uh, Wilson County. The reason why there's a flash flood warning is because in those areas over seven inches of rain fell in some places uh, near St. Hedwig. This is a look at some of our KSAC Connect users pictures in St. Hedwig. Thank you so much for sending in these pictures. We really appreciate it. You can see that the rain gauge is reading more than five inches of rain there. This is an overflowing five inch rain gauge, so about six inches of rain at least out in Dwyer's backyard. And then take a look at the uh, ground flooding here uh, and ponding across the backyard of somebody's house out in St. Hedwig. So again, too much of a good thing across parts of Eastern Bear County. Now for the rest of the day today, we're going to be seeing temperatures in the 60s near 70 degrees this afternoon for the high northeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Something to keep in mind is that uh, tomorrow's going to be pretty damp and humid after today's brief respite from the humidity, but then big changes next week as well with a stronger cold front coming up. We'll take a look at that cold front and I'll tell you about those rainfall totals around Bear County and around the KSAT 12 viewing area. Max and Sarah back to you. Thank you, Sarah. We have a couple new stories just into our newsroom. First, a big update to a story we first brought you last week. And remember, we told you about that Amber Alert for six children. Well, that children's father, he's been arrested once again. So take a look. Jamie Davidson now facing new charges coming out of Chambers County. That's near Houston right now. Still waiting to learn more details about the case, why he got arrested specifically. Now, you may recall Jamie and Jacqueline. Davidson were arrested last Saturday after that Amber Alert for their six children. CPS was temporarily granted custody of the children due to abuse allegations. Obviously, this is an updating story, so make sure to stay with us on air and online as more information becomes available. Also new into our newsroom, we have just learned a third victim is dead following that explosion in southeast Bear County yesterday. We first brought you this story yesterday on GMSA. That explosion happened near K-Bar. That's a construction company on South Press Street near Highway 181. Now, people in the area say they heard that boom. Rachel Reyes lives a mile away from the explosion and says it sounded much closer. We hit the garage door like really hard, and you can even like feel like a vibration like that. San Antonio Fire says a huge scene like this will take some time to figure out exactly what caused that explosion. As for now, the Bear County Medical Office is still working to identify the three victims. And new this morning, multiple shootings overnight. One mother finding her daughter shot just outside of their home on the city's west side. Let's take a look. This was the scene on Texas Avenue near Woodlawn Lake. Police on the scene telling us the woman, the mother, went outside, find, found her daughter in a vehicle shot in the back. Now, we're told that vehicle had actually been stolen. Four other teenagers now in custody for questioning. The girl who was shot is expected to recover. And we do expect more information from police on the suspects and what exactly happened.
New this morning, the search is on for the shooter that sent one person to the hospital overnight. It happened just after midnight on Kalima Street near South Zarzamora. That's on the city's west side. Police say a man and a woman were walking home from the store when a driver of a silver SUV pulled up next to them and started shooting. The man was shot in the leg and he was taken to University Hospital. He's expected to be OK. Police are still looking for that shooter. And also overnight, San Antonio firefighters and San Antonio police called to a neighborhood where a vehicle crashed into a house and then that sparked a fire. So according to police on the scene, this all happened around 2 a.m. A driver was speeding south on Babcock Road. They lost control of their vehicle and crashed into this house. That's when a small fire started inside. Luckily, everyone who was inside the home at the time of the crash and the time of the flames, everyone made it out safely. We are told alcohol may have been a factor in this crash. Still waiting to learn the suspect's identification and what charges they're going to be facing. All right, there is so much excitement in and around San Antonio. The Alamo Dome, home to so many fun, electric, and captivating events. And with 2023 right around the corner, there is so much more in store. It's been an exciting year for the Alamo Dome. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Richard Oliver with the Alamo Dome. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. I love that, Max. Fu fun, entertaining, and captivating. I'm, I'm putting it down right now in my press release. <laughs> we got to throw Thanks it better. on a banner somewhere. But no, Richard, <laughs> looking right back me, <laughs> over the last 12 months, you know, from your perspective, from the Alma Dome's perspective, how was 2022 at the Dome? I think resurgent is a great word. I mean, it was an outstanding year, um, you know, especially, and it kind of ramped up as the year went on. And now we don't want to ever say that we're through the pandemic. I don't know that that we can safely say that at any point at this time, but I tell you what, if anything personified how San Antonio likes to get together and be together as a group, I think the Alamo Dome did it this year. The last five months of 2022 saw 13 events with 10,000 or more people at the Alamo Dome, including, of course, Bad Bunny, Grupo Firme, Rammstein, Poison, Motley Crue, and oh yeah, how about UTSA football and what they did over the last few weeks? Uh, it has been an outstanding year, and 2023 is shaping up to look pretty good as well. Okay, and you just said 2023. It's around the corner. There's excitement brewing already. Um, I know my husband's very excited about Royal Rumble coming in <laughs> January. It's a big deal for the wrestling world. So what should San Antonio expect in terms of events? You know, it's really, there's there's a lot of events coming up in 2023, Sarah. And one, and one thing, though, in May 15th, there's a pretty big birthday party. The Alamo Dome turns 30 years old awesome. on May the 15th of next year. So we have got a slew of things happening all year long. It's going to be outstanding. We thought 2022 was good. Let me tell you, we've got, of course, Royal Rumble, just that you mentioned. Everyone's uh, just so excited about that. Ticket sales are through the roof. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, you better jump on that. The Spurs 50th anniversary game on January the 13th, trying to set the NBA record for attendance, 65,000 people. They're trying to get in there for that. The Warriors are coming to town, so that's going to be a great game. And, of course, we've named a couple of uh, the XFL Spring Football League. The Rock will be here uh, in the spring, certainly uh, kicking off that league. And also we've named two big concerts, Pink in September, the Red Hot Chili Peppers in May, and we've got a uh, couple more that I can't tell you about just yet, but uh, we've got some really great events coming up in 2023. And again, 30 years old for the Alamo Dome. You sure you don't want to break any of that news here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so fun fact, me and the Alamo Dome have the exact same birthday, year and day of the month. But Richard, you actually, uh, you kind of mentioned UTSA a little bit. You, you mentioned the XFL. You know, what is UTSA's immense success over the last two years? What has that meant to the Dome? It's meant a lot. In fact, you, you kind of think that UTSA success, their recruiting to be able to bring in some of the players they brought in, uh, part of it stems from playing in the Alamo Dome. I mean, not too many college football teams get a domed stadium, what the, the kind of atmosphere that UTSA has for its ball games. And I t hats off to Jeff Trailer and his team because what they've done over the last couple of years is exhilarating. I mean, it's so much fun to watch this city get behind a Division One football program. Max, you're a football fan. You and I have talked a lot about sports over the years. I, uh, For the longest time, this is what we wanted. Division One football in San Antonio, successful. UTSA has brought that. And over those seven, the last seven games uh, from September on through the end of the year, more than almost 200,000 people in the dome for UTS, UTSA football and the Conference USA football championship. And then you bring an XFL. You know, the Alamo Dome was built for football uh, in so many ways. 
it took a while, but we have big time football in there now. Okay, so next year is the Alamo Dome's 30th birthday. And what has this facility meant to, to San Antonio? You know, a friend of mine asked me that the other day, who's, who's been here all these years. And he said, you know, one thing that comes to mind for me is it's just the place of memories. It's a place of moments. Uh, you know, when you talk about the quality of life in San Antonio, when you talk about uh, even, even industries and companies coming into San Antonio looking for things for their employees, and not, not only that, but the locals and the things that we've experienced at the Alamo Dome over the years. I joke all the time that they, they've dumped enough confetti out of the rafters of the Alamo Dome to cover the Alamo. And I, think it's, I don't think I'm that far off on that. I mean, we have decided championships. We've decided moments. The Alamo Dome is an important part of the San Antonio landscape, uh, but not only because of what it brings, but just the spotlight that it brings on San Antonio time and again. 2018, Max and I were shooting baskets at four in the morning uh, for the final four as he was doing all kinds of live hits there. And I thought at the time, I mean, those are the kind of events that come in and shift a big old spotlight and drive revenue in San Antonio. Speaking of big spotlight on the Alamo Dome, Bad Bunny was massive for the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Can we see anything that big uh, to that extent coming in the next year or two? Well, you know, as a man of a certain seasoning, when uh, Bad Bunny came in, I didn't even know who he was, to be honest, but a lot of people did. We had 54,000 people there. It drove millions in revenue uh, in the Alamo Dome. Those are the kind of events that not only, again, we talked about the spotlight, that was an international spotlight event. Uh, for that one night, San Antonio was the center of the entertainment universe, and it was just so much fun to be around. I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Uh, I think we've got events coming in. I think the Alamo Dome's being established as an entertainment center. Uh, and as those things happen, uh, that, of course, brings in revenue for the city, but also brings that spotlight that shows people what San Antonio is all about. And it's the place you want to be. Uh, that's what a, a concert like Bad Bunny brings. All right, Richard Oliver with the Alamo Dome. It is the place we want to be. Thank you so much for joining us, Richard. Anyone who missed any part of the interview or any details of the events, we're going to have all that information throughout the morning on KSAT.com. All right, time now. It's just about 8, 12, 62 degrees out. Okay, coming up on GMSA, we go, behind, we go backstage to see the behind the scenes of the national tour of On Your Feet, the musical about Gloria and Emilio Esteban. And a quick live look out at the Alamo City. 62 degrees, sunshine, what? We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. There's a show playing at the Majestic Theater this weekend that is sure to get you, get you on your feet. It really is such a fun musical. It's about the international stars Gloria and Emilio Estefan. Our Stefania Jimenez tells us more. There's a reason this show is called On Your Feet, and that's because that's exactly what you're going to want to do when you hear pop classics. Plus, you're also going to be in for some surprises. You're going to want to get on your feet in the middle, in the, you know, in the end. There is, you know, a little spoiler alert. You get a little on your feet because we dance with you. So it's definitely a very, very good dance show. We definitely go uh, from since Gloria is a very, like since she's, 16, if I'm not mistaken, a very, very uh, young age until the accident, which is in 1991, um, like the AMA, AMA performance. So we're going to go all through that era. And even before that, we go to the 40s, but then using all glorious songs since, you know, Dr. B in the 80s, one, two, three, until we get to coming out of the dark and of course, Conga. So you're gonna hear all those like greatest hits. I knew, I knew Gloria Stefan, I knew Emilia Stefan's story from before, but when I started doing this musical, I was like, whoa, they went through so much. On Your Feet plays at the Majestic Theater through Sunday for tickets and more information. You know where to go, our website, ksat.com. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. All right, turning to weather now, Sarah, it has been so eventful for you in the last 24 yeah. hours. Well, it has for parts of Bear County, no rain whatsoever, just some thunder and lightning last night. But for other parts of our city uh, and out into Guadalupe County, we had too much rain, too much rain resulted in some flooding. As you can see right now, though, the rain has ended for San Antonio. It's pushing out to the coast and closer to the Houston area. However, there is still a flash flood warning in 
in effect for eastern Bear County and parts of southern Guadalupe County as well. In fact, uh, again, that is in effect until 9 a.m. Even though there's no rain occurring right now, so much rain fell in this area that it's still draining off. And so I want to show you just an idea of how much rain we've seen in this area. First, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the 12 hour rainfall totals, but really honestly, since about uh, since about one o'clock this morning, rain has been falling across these areas. And you can see this bullseye right here from Adkins through St. Hedwig to New Berlin in these areas we saw up to seven to potentially eight inches of rain in that purple color there, about six to eight inches of rainfall in that purple color. A lot, a lot of rainfall leading to some flooding issues in those places. And in fact, it was very localized. Again, let's take a look out near St. Hedwig, about seven and a half inches of radar estimated rain. Up near Schertz, less than a tenth of an inch of rainfall. And when we look at the distance there, this is how localized that was. 10 miles to the north of that bullseye. No rain whatsoever, but it wasn't just all flooding or all nothing. There were still plenty of areas that saw some good rain outside of that, like near Calaveras Lake, where we saw up to about one to two inches of rain near Calaveras Lake. Near China Grove, again, in that flash flooding area, but about four inches of rainfall. And in the southern part of uh, Loop 410, about three inches of rainfall from downtown through Mitchell Lake. Lake. But unfortunately, there were those who missed out completely on the rain, including those in northern Bear County, northwestern Bear County, and across the hill country. Elsewhere, we did see some decent rain near Floresville and Poth. Speaking of Wilson County, because so much rain fell upstream of Cibolo Creek, later on today, there could be some minor flooding of Cibolo Creek down near Sutherland Springs. So keep that in mind and monitor that creek very carefully. But otherwise, again, all that rain Rain has pushed on off to the south and to the east, uh, and the front is continuing to push on through the south. This is a pretty weak front. Temperatures are not all that much cooler behind it. It's still near 60 degrees in junction, and the front has been through for quite some time. We're looking at mostly cloudy skies near the airport, 63 degrees with winds from the north at about 10 miles per hour. Elsewhere, it's 65 in Hondo, 61 in Kerrville, 55 in Rock Springs, and 55, 65 in Kennedy. Looking through the rest of the day today, temperatures Temperatures are going to be cooler than they have been the last few days. We'll be in the mid to upper 60s around noon and in the upper 60s in the afternoon, right near 70 degrees for the high temperature tonight and uh, today and a cool evening in the low 60s. Elsewhere, it'll be 68 in New Braunfels, 66 in Kerrville, 73 in Uvalde, and 75 in Catula. Even though the humidity will be lower and pleasantly lower today, by tomorrow, humidity returns, and that'll actually result in a pretty drizzly and damp day tomorrow. We'll be looking at a drizzle and fog throughout the day tomorrow with a high temperature of 72. Then a more potent cold front moves through Tuesday, sweeping away the humidity, bringing the sunshine, chilly mornings and cool afternoons. I'll be talking more about that cold front coming up in the next half hour. Love to see sunshine in our future, especially that all caps low humidity. <laughs> oh, no, made it obvious. You might as well just put like serenity. Serenity <laughs> now. Thank you, Sarah. Time now 821, 63 degrees out. All right, a San Antonio artist is trying to bring more Christmas spirit to the community. Next, how he's doing so with his latest mural. And before we head to break, a quick look at those lotto numbers. Your pick three numbers, 572, Fireball 8, Daily 4, 8759, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 2, 13, 29, 30, 35. Texas Lotto, 18, 21, 29, 31, 47, 48. Here are the Powerball numbers, 9, 23, 47, 49, 68. Powerball 19, Power Play 2. Good morning and welcome back. A local artist hoping to bring some much needed holiday spirit to San Antonio with his latest piece. Colton Valentine has created a one of a kind holiday mural with a South Texas twist. I love this mural. <laughs> Looks like the old school Coca-Cola Santas yeah. on, the, on the bottle, on the glass bottles. So take a look. The mural shows Santa with a big red and even has a face tattoo. The mural located at 317 West Jones Avenue near the San Antonio Museum of Art. Oh, that's right near us. Yeah. 
Valentine says he hopes his artwork will connect with locals on a cultural level. The mural is part of a holiday hunt that Valentine is putting on through December to learn more. Awesome. or where you can keep up with his latest creations, head to ksat.com. And Valentine has done such amazing pieces throughout the, war throughout the year. Also, huge birthday alert. This is our photographer, Timmy. Happy birthday, Timmy. Timmy <laughs> has been at KSAT for, I think, what, 20 plus years, 25 yeah, plus years? Yeah, but I don't want to, you know, his age. No, but you he, look great, he loves to tell you the story about how much he, how long he's been here at KSAT. He's a wonderful photographer, and now he's one of our editors during mm -hmm. the week at GMSA. We hope you have a wonderful birthday, Timmy. All right. Time now is 827, 63 degrees out. Coming up, the latest in Ukraine video showing the destruction in one eastern Ukrainian city, what Ukraine's President Zelensky is saying. And still ahead, new data showing the Mauna Loa volcano may soon be coming to an end. We have the latest from scientists. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, December 11th. It is, and you know what? Still doesn't feel like December. Even yesterday, got some no. weather, but it was, it was pretty calm and quiet out there until like the sun went down. Humid, cloudy. Not even, we didn't even see the sun yesterday. Didn't even see the sun. And then overnight, Sarah, some of us had those thunderstorms, but some people didn't get any rain at all. I know. Some, I was one of those people who didn't get any rain at all, but... I did hear the thunder outside, and this is a picture sent in by one of our KSAT viewers out near the Converse area of the lightning last night. A really beautiful picture here. You may think it's in black and white, but it's not. You can actually see the colored Christmas lights there on the house, but just very electrified storm last night. It even dropped some quarter-sized hail in New Berlin, but this was the big story. It also dropped about five to eight inches of rain out across East Bear County. This is a look at uh, someone's backyard in the St. Hedwig area. And again, up to about five to eight inches of rainfall. This is a look at one of those rain gauges overflowing. It's a five inch rain gauge overflowing from the amount of rain yesterday. And it was very, very localized. Please send in your pictures through our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app if you do have any pictures. You can see, again, just how localized this bullseye of rain is because there's still a flash flood warning in effect for eastern Bear County, southern Guadalupe County as all of that rain just drains off. That is in effect until about nine. So for about the next 30 minutes or so, remember if you run into any roadways that are covered with water, turn around, don't drown. But the airport reported no rain last night. So again, a very localized flooding event last night. Here's what we're going to cover in the forecast coming up today. Cooler near 70 degrees. Still some clouds out there today. Tomorrow, though, humid again. Again, another damp, drizzly day tomorrow. But before we settle into that weather pattern, we'll get a potent cold front on Tuesday. And then it's a bye bye to the humidity. Hello to the sunshine and cooler temperatures, too. Details coming up in a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Now to a big update of a mother whose child was shot and killed in Uvalde. Her daughter was taken from her, but that didn't stop Kimberly Rubio for fighting for change in her daughter's honor. And it also didn't stop her from finishing school. One of the best students in her class, a 3.8 GPA. Now, this achievement coming six months since her daughter, Lexi Rubio, was shot and killed at Robb Elementary. Kimberly says she was thinking of her daughter at the entire ceremony, and as she navigates a new chapter of her life, she acknowledges the pain that it comes with. Her husband allowing us to capture the special moment after Kimberly received her degree. I am very proud of you, of course. I know Lexi's looking down on you and she's happy. She's here. And I love you. Love you too. Now Kimberly says she had plans to leave Uvalde after graduation, but now that her daughter Lexi is buried in Uvalde, she and her family are readjusting and trying to figure out what comes next. Now to the major pipeline spill in Kansas, the largest spill on the la on land in nearly 10 years. ABC's M. Wynn joins us more, joins us with more on the cleanup.
This morning, an urgent federal investigation is underway into a Keystone Pipeline rupture that spilled nearly 600,000 gallons of oil into a Kansas creek on Wednesday. Emergency crews scrambling to clean up what's now the nation's largest on-land spill in nearly a decade. A diesel-type smell. It's in the immediate area. The pipeline was forced to shut down, sparking new concerns about higher gas prices. We certainly could see an exponential increase on the effect of gas prices if the pipeline remains down for more than a week. That's really going to be pushing it. Officials on site like Randy Hubbard saying it's not clear when the line will restart. You know, I think they're still trying to assess what all the damages are and the implications. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg saying his agency is closely monitoring and investigating the Keystone Pipeline leak. The spill raising questions from environmentalists about whether the pipeline operator TC Energy should keep a federal permit that allowed the pressure inside parts of the Keystone system to exceed the typical maximum permitted levels. What high pressure does to a pipeline is it, it really finds the weakest point and will uh, if it's high enough, could rupture from that point. But there are a lot of other uh, potential causes for a pipeline to fail. And that was M. Wynn reporting. Now to Peru, where at least 20 people hurt during clashes, four of those injured police officers. So the motive for the protest from yesterday, not exactly clear, but it did take place in one of several towns where people have taken to the streets, demanding the release of ousted and now jailed former president. Meanwhile, Peru's new president named her new cabinet just days after the former president, Castillo, was arrested for rebellion and conspiracy. Castillo has been accused of attempting to dissolve the legislature and prevent an impeachment vote. The Mauna Loa volcanic eruption on the big island of Hawaii may soon be coming to an end. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the latest data indicates the volcano may soon fall silent. In response, the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory has reduced the volcano alert level from a warning to a watch, but scientists won't, won't rule out the small possibility the eruption could continue at a very low rate. And now to the latest with Russia and Ukraine, Russia's blistering attacks in the eastern portion of Ukraine. New video showing devastation in an eastern Ukrainian city. President Zelensky accusing Russia of burning the city to the ground. Now, the people who live there are mostly elderly. They're trying to get out as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, Russia reportedly looking to Iran to replenish the Russian military stockpile. That's another sign of the cooperation between Iran and Russia. So far, the United States has done what they can to help Ukraine, providing more than $20 billion since the invasion. A Tokyo company is aiming for the moon with its own private mechanism and it's blasting off atop, atop a SpaceX rocket. It's flying with the United Arab Emirates first lunar rover and a toy-like robot from Japan that's designed to roll around up there in the gray dust. It will take nearly five months for the lander and its experiments to reach the moon. The company iSpace designed its craft to use minimal fuel to save money and leave more room for cargo. So it's taking a slow, low energy path to the moon, flying one million miles from Earth before looping back and intersecting with the moon by the end of April. Don't worry, NASA is jumping in on this too, hitching a ride on the rocket with a small NASA laser experiment that is now bound for the moon on its own to hunt for ice in permanently shadowed craters of the lunar south pole. Well, back here on Earth and in San Antonio, a local organization making sure children who are impaired or deaf, making sure they receive their Christmas wishes from Santa. Shields for Kids hosting its fourth annual Signing Santa yesterday and officers from different agencies all participating. Of course, Santa was in town using sign language to speak with the children at the event. Now, the children able to tell Santa what they wanted just in time for Christmas. A lot of times these children have never been able to communicate to Santa what it is they want for Christmas or if Santa can ask him, have you been a good boy or a bad boy, those kinds of things. In addition to spending time with Santa, the children and their siblings received Christmas gifts. The gifts are all made possible through donations from our community.
It's so sweet. And then the spirit of giving is definitely in the air. Here's an easy way for you to take part in the giving. The Salvation Army kettles are out and about throughout San Antonio. Local businesses and journalists, including us here at KSAT, are ringing the bell, including Max Massey and Sarah Spivey. Ooh. They were at the Walmart on the south side earlier this week. And it's all to help families in need, no, no matter how big or small that donation, every donation helps. So the Salvation Army says a $50 donation provides a homeless mother with her three children a one night stay at the shelter, including hot meals. And that's a huge, makes a huge difference. So you can donate by scanning this QR code on your screen or by heading to ksat.com. And as you said, Sarah Spivey and I were out there and so impressed with so many people who stopped and donated, even just a dollar, it really does make such a difference. Head to ksat.com, help us help the community. Time now, 840, 63 degrees south. A Christmas wonderland is back at SeaWorld. We got a peek into the park that has millions of lights displayed this year. That's next. And speaking of Sarah Spivey, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Calm and quiet out there now, even some sunshine. Haven't seen that in a little bit. We're going to check in with Sarah for your full forecast. San Antonio's annual Christmas celebration with 9 million lights is back at SeaWorld. Our meteorologist Mia went to see what it was all about. Let's check it out. Hey everyone, meteorologist Mia Montgomery here. This is my first Christmas season back here in San Antonio and at KSAT, so we wanted to go look for some fun, festive things to do around town. So we came out here to SeaWorld for their annual Christmas celebration. Let's head inside and see all the wonderful things they've got going on this year. All right, y'all, we are here with for having us out oh, here today. To so festive. What can people expect when they do come out here to the Christmas celebration? We're right off the bat walking into the gates, nine million lights. I know because I counted them. No, just kidding. <laughs> Although we all, all the employees in the park took turns putting some of the lights up. Is there anything new here at the park? For Christmas this year is a show called Oh Wondrous Night. You know the story of the nativity and the very yeah. first Christmas. Well, we're gonna tell that story, but the way we do it here at SeaWorld is with animals. How unique. Well, should we go meet some of those animals? I think maybe we should meet some animals. Yeah. All right. All right, y'all, now we are here with Drew, who is not only a cast member in Oh Wondrous Night, but is also a caretaker of these amazing camels. Tell us about some of the adaptations of some of these camels. How about you come in a little closer and give him a little brush on the face? Oh, he's you see, so cute. he is adorable. Do you see these big eyelashes right here? Those eyelashes actually serve to make sure that there isn't a lot of sun glare in their eyes when they're in the deserts to filter out sand particles. And those thick, beautiful lips that he's got right there serve to help them eat spiky vege vegetation like cactus uh, or other things that normally wouldn't uh, be accessible to animals. Talking about Christmas celebration, we want to give you a little Christmas gift, and that was to meet a beluga whale. Elizabeth, you have an awesome animal friend for us to meet here. Who I is this? Do. This is Luna. She's 22 years old. She was born right here at SeaWorld San Antonio. And if you want to come a little bit closer, okay. we'll get a nice big hello and get, let her give you a kiss on the cheek. If you want to find out more information about SeaWorld's annual Christmas celebration, we've got all of that linked up for you at KSAT.com. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. I am so jealous. That Very is so jealous. awesome. I want to get kissed by a beluga. No one's stopping you. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. It was still beautiful out there when she did it. And, it, and I love that we're like nearing Christmas and it's 63 degrees. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's 63 degrees in the morning and our average high temperature this time of year is 66. Some of us got some rain last night. That helped to wash down the mountain cedar just a little bit. Mountain cedar yesterday was high. Today it's moderate, still out there at 320. 20. Molds have actually gone up though. Molds are now at 870 in moderate. So a bit of a double-edged sword there. It, either way you look at it, not a great day for allergy sufferers. It's 63 degrees outside right now. Winds are from the northeast behind that weak front that moved through last night. But that front did bring some rain for quite a few folks around, especially East Bear County and Guadalupe County. Today though, no rain for us, just a mixture of sun and clouds. Temperatures will make Mainly be in the 60s. We'll be in the mid 60s by noon, and in the afternoon, upper 60s 
60s, close to 70 degrees for the high temperature. Tonight, it's going to be mild. You might need that light sweater just because temperatures are going to be in the low 60s by about 8 o'clock. And then tomorrow is going to be a pretty muggy and damp day. But let's talk for a second here about the rainfall that we saw around San Antonio overnight. Most of that rain is now well to the east of us, closer to the coast. But you'll notice that there still is a flash flood warning in effect for East Bear County and Southern Guadalupe County until nine, just in the next 10 minutes or so. And the reason why is there's still some water on those low water crossings uh, and quite a bit of rain fell across this area in this green uh, warning. In fact, I'll show you right now the radar estimated rainfall totals bullseye right in this area from St. Hedwig to New Berlin. Plenty of rain for China Grove, Lone Oak, Lavernia and Zool as well. But look at these rainfall totals. I mean, we're talking seven to uh, six to about eight inches of rain all in that purple color there that quickly create fell in about three hours. Just to put that in perspective at the airport, we've seen only 11 inches of rain for this entire year. So more than half of the year's worth of rain fell in eastern Bear County in the span of a couple of hours. And when we look at rainfall totals elsewhere, not much and no rain for northern Bear County, western Bear County and out west toward uh, Hondo and Castroville. So in the span of 10 miles, you had zero rain northern part of shirts closer to 35 to seven inches of rain in that eastern Bear County. Elsewhere, though, we did get about an inch of rain near Elmendorf, a decent amount of rain near Floresville as well. And again, that flash flood warning in effect just for the next 10 minutes or so as all that rain drains off. By the way, if you live on Cibolo Creek downstream from that in Wilson County, you may need to watch for some minor flooding as all that rain drains into Cibolo Creek. As we look at the weather setup, there's that system pushing off south of Houston. Here's our next system bringing a lot of snowfall and cold air to parts of uh, Nevada and even parts of the Rockies there in Montana. This is going to be really finally sweeping away the humidity for quite some time and pulling in some colder air from the north as well. We won't be in the 20s, but it is going to be noticeably cooler by about Wednesday morning. But tomorrow, we got to get through tomorrow first. And tomorrow, we will have drizzle, a damp commute near 60 degrees. And the drizzle is going to kind of be around for most of the day tomorrow with cloudy conditions and a high temperature only near 72. So keep that in mind. Tomorrow should be a damp, drizzly day. But then Tuesday is our cold front day. All right, Tuesday is going to start off damp and drizzly before that front moves through. But once that front moves through in the midday hours, it it will become breezy. We'll see plenty of sunshine and temperatures will be in the 60s. It's also going to get chilly behind that front too. Here's how that stacks up in your seven day forecast. Drizzle and fog tomorrow for us, but then that front arrives Tuesday morning. That'll knock down the humidity. Our mornings will be back in the 40s. Highs will be back in the 60s. That's pretty seasonable this time of year, but we do have the potential to be even colder over next weekend as well with highs only in the 50s. So we'll keep you posted. Holiday weather. Holiday weather love as it. we get closer to the holiday. I love it. You say it's funny because we say holiday weather, but I used to work in North Platte, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was 25 degrees there yesterday morning. So this holiday weather, a lot better. Hey, on Christmas, sometimes we end up near 80 degrees. So let's hope that that's not the case. <laughs> no, he wants it. We're I like, no, 80, 80 <laughs> no. 80 and sunny, ideal. 60, All right. 60 and sunny. I, I like could that. do 60. That's fair. All right, 851, 63 degrees. Well, make sure to make the most wonderful time of the year. It isn't a dangerous one. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll tell you about a safe toy shopping guide. Showing you this map again, just to show you how localized the flooding was last night. Areas near St. Hedwig and to Southern Guadalupe County saw anywhere from five to eight inches of rain, while areas north of that saw very little rainfall, very little in Schertz, very little Leon Valley, no rain reported at the San Antonio International Airport. 
So if you are in eastern Bear County, be aware that there still could be some water rushing over those low water cro crossings. Otherwise, here's your pollen count for the day. Mountain Cedar has now moderate went down because of a little bit of rain. Molds have gone up a little bit because of the rainfall as well, but still moderate. Today we'll be looking at mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures mainly in the 60s today. We'll be topping off near 70 degrees this afternoon and in the evening it'll be in the low 60s. Then tomorrow we're going to have a day Damp day, drizzle, fog throughout the day, and cloudy skies. High temperature in the 70s. That a front moves through midday Tuesday, sweeps out the humidity, and makes it feel more like December by the end of the week with sunshine. I love to hear that. Thank you, sunshine. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Happy Sunday.